Good morning everybody and once again welcome back to the video. In this video we are going to talk about clustering in Apache hoodie. Uh, what is clustering in Apache hoodie, uh, why you want to consider it and why you should do it in an async mode. So again I'll try my best to answer some of these questions followed by a small lab. Again, clustering in Apache hoodie, you know, it's basically when, uh, during ingestion, right? When you have high velocity data streams, right, that are coming in, you want to write data as soon as possible. So probably, you know, the compaction, the cleaning, the, the indexing, I probably all, all these options, I want to do it in an async way so that I can write the data as soon as possible. Now, for achieving that high um, uh, throughput, right, basically what you can do is uh, you can write smaller number of parquet files to achieve high parallelism. But again, small number of parquet files are usually not that great for query purposes, right? Also, uh, usually when the data comes uh, through these streams, right, uh, the data is not grouped together, the similar data is not grouped together. Uh, so that also creates a problem. These all problems can be addressed by clustering. Uh, think of clustering, uh, for example, let's say you have data coming in and there's a column called state. Again, I'm giving you a very simple example. Let's say uh, in the night, I wanna schedule a job, basically, which will group all the data points with New York in it together in one file, California in one file. So now, what are the advantage, right? By doing so, your queries A are much more performant, which means it's much more faster. Data skipping can be done, which means a lot of files which are not necessary can be skipped, right? So let's take a look at um, clustering with a small demo. Again, uh, Apache Hoodie has done a fantastic job on their website explaining all these concepts in a very nice way. Uh, in, in, in general, clustering has two parts to it. A is the planning part and the uh, scheduling part and the execu executing part. So again, in the planning part, what you do is basically you identify the files and file groups which are eligible for clustering. And then when you um, fire the execute command, it will essentially perform the clustering, which means it is essentially gonna uh, group your um, uh, files based on the call, you know, um, based on certain conditions, right? Again, there are several strategy. So let's take a look at a small hands-on lab, which will make sure that these concepts are much more clearer to you. So let me show you the glue job uh, quickly. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Again, very, very straightforward, right? Here we are creating, defining some imports. Here we're defining some Spark session. Then here I have a class which will generate some fake data points. As you can see, it's a, I'm using a library called Faker. Um, over here, I'm defining some settings and here is the Hori settings. The only thing that I'm here doing is if you observe uh, this one. Hoodie clustering async enabled as true. And then basically, uh, I'm basically writing this data set into a hoodie more table. Now, I'll run this glue job. And once the glue job is done, we'll essentially learn how to submit, uh, how to first schedule a clustering job, which will identify which files needs to be clustered. And then you can essentially fire the execute command. So let's uh, basically head over to the AWS console and run the glue job now. So here you can see, I'm gonna copy all the code over here, paste the code over here, click on save, and then run the job. So the job is in the running state. I'll essentially resume uh, once the job is complete. Once the job is complete, I should see some uh, data in this uh, S3 bucket. So I'll pause the video and resume once the job is complete. My job is finally complete. As you can see, now it's in the succeeded state. So if you come to the S3, and here you can see if I refresh, here you can see all the base file. If I download one of the base file, just to sort of show you again, uh, the goal is just to show you. What you will observe, uh, I, I purposely, I'm going to do the clustering on a state, right? So if you observe here, RJ, Illinois, New York, it's not in order, right? The order in which the data came, it's basically started writing. Now, you will actually see once the clustering is done, when we download the file, similar states will be together. It'll be grouped together. I'll, I'll show you that in action. So now the next job, the next is basically let's schedule the clustering, which will identify what files needs to be clustered or regroup and then execute it. So back and now we will essentially um, basically uh, fire up a, 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 an async uh, clustering job. So again, uh, pretty straightforward the code, right? So here observe carefully class org.apachehoodie.utilities.hoodie clustering job. So we're gonna do the clustering job. So I'm using that class. 
um, this is important you can uh, again play with the memory and parallelism right here is the base path which is a path to the transactional data lake uh, which you can see here on line number 30 these are the settings that I'm using so here you can see hoodie clustering async enable true uh, then again the max commit has set to 4 and again if you observe carefully over here hoodie clustering plan strategy sort column by state so basically I'm saying that hey group similar data points together right um, so um, yeah that's that and here we are also giving uh, the target max file bytes and the, uh, the small file limit so basically this is in megabytes so it's about 100 megabytes right so now when I basically execute this so again there are two modes to do it again you can do schedule and execute or you can do schedule and then execute right or you can again do everything in a one go so for now I'm gonna use the schedule and execute again you can also do schedule first to identify and then execute okay so I will be running this job the job has been fired on the EMR so now heading back to the EMR console again we have downloaded that file right so we basically saw that um, you know uh, the, the the data points order the data points was not ordered in the in, in the parquet files right so now we have submitted a clustering job so coming here and here you can see it's in the pending state so here you can see these are all the parameters we passed right and here the job is now in the pending state the job can take a while so i'll pause the video and again resume once the job is in the either running or completed state okay so let me uh, resume back so my job has finally complete uh, you can see it's in the success state and uh, now let's head over to the s3 so if i come back to my transactional data like here again i see the total number of files uh, you know have increased so, so basically it does have you know so i'm gonna download this particular file just to show you i'm gonna open it on my computer now I, if I can actually show you together, look at this California CA, 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 right? Then basically all that similar um, data points are grouped together in one file group, which means now when I'm running query, it, it is much more faster performance, performant, uh, and also uh, data scaping can be done because now it doesn't have to scan all the data, right? So you truly see the benefits of doing a clustering job, right? Again, you can first schedule it, which will identify which files needs to be, uh, you know, a regroup, and then you can execute it, or you can use schedule and execute. Thank you very much for the watching the video. I hope you have enjoyed, and if you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section below. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, make sure to hit the like button on, the, on this video.